Hello, it's what I'm about to talk about here sort of picks up on some of the things that uh, Dave Knight just talked about. My, my day job is at the University of Salford, uh, running a centre for applied archaeology. But in the UK, but I'm actually here to, uh, talking about the subject in my role as chair of the Association for Industrial Archaeology, which is, I suppose, one of two period societies in Europe that cover the post post seventeen hundred period and industrialization and the creation of the modern world. The other being, of course, the Society for Post Medieval Archaeology. So, what I really want to just think about is is frameworks and how we might um, develop that in industrial archaeology terms. Because I have to bear in mind what we mean by industrial archaeology. So that's the archaeology of industrialization, which involves technological development, landscape change, looking at buildings, building biography, also the social context of industrialization, and quite a bit of intangible heritage. But if we're talking about industrialization, industrial archaeology, we are talking about that shift from a, a rural, um, a, a, a rural uh, society to a modern mass. Uh, mass manufacturing, urban-based uh, society, which of course happens at different rates and di at different points throughout Europe. Uh, David mentioned uh, the Derwent Valley Mills as being one of the centres of industrialisation in the UK. There's sort of eight or nine particular foci in the UK in the 18th century, and then it sort of spreads out across uh, Europe. This is a particular type of storytelling. All, I would argue all research frameworks enable storytelling and it's a type of storytelling that is based on scientific evidence but we have to be upfront about this that we tell stories in specific ways using specific types of information and if we develop research frameworks then what we want is for people to participate in that particular type of storytelling. Now the Association for Industrial Archaeology uh, has a, a reasonably long track record in in thinking about research frameworks, our first research, <coughs> research framework was published back in 1991 uh, in our um, journal, Industrial Archaeology Review, and we updated that in 2005, and we're currently at the moment thinking about how we could update that further. In terms of asking questions, this 2005 document actually started with a, a, an article that posed eight high-level questions, and then there's a series of 10 or 12 articles that discuss particular aspects of industrialization. One of the bigger issues for this period, and it doesn't really matter whether we're in the Derwent Valley or in Barcelona or the Ruhr Valley, is the huge volume of evidence. And, and that evidence is not just excavated evidence is also above ground evidence. That was one of the reasons I had that list at the beginning that talks about building biography and intangible heritage. We are overwhelmed with data from the last two to three hundred uh, years. And you only have to wander around Barcelona, having looked at the industrial bits of Barcelona, to realise how extensive the upstanding remains are, let alone the below ground remains. So bringing sense to that has been a theme of the research the two previous research agendas that the association has uh, dealt with over the, over the past 30 years. And of course, that is made harder, in one sense, by the growth in developer-funded work. These uh, multicolored graphs just show you the volume of developer-funded work uh, going on in the UK between 1990 and 2010. 60% of all of that work involves post-medieval and industrial material, 60%. And that's reflected in the, in the volume of uh, academic publications in Industrial Archaeology Review and Post-Medieval post Archaeology, our two international journals. Uh, this just shows you some of the different subjects that have been published uh, in those two journals between 1990 and 2016. On, it's not just UK subjects, both journals publish uh, extensively on European uh, material. 
as well. Increasingly so in the last 10 years. Uh, we've had articles from, on, from sites in Albania and the Czech Republic and Hungary in the Industrial Archaeology Review just, just in the last decade. Um, and then also we have an input, particularly in the UK context, we have a large voluntary sector. We have over 600 organisations in the UK, um, independent organisations, who look after industrial buildings, look after machinery and the structures they sit within, and undertake field work. How do we capture their research? Adding value to that that work of conservation by the voluntary sector as well as by our, our museums as well as by developer, fund, de developer funded work is I think one of the key issues we have in trying to draw together any research framework that deals with industrial archaeology and in particular yeah. industrialization. We need to integrate that developer funded work, we need to look at the voluntary uh, archive, the vo voluntary uh, community groups archive and one of the ways we, the association has done that in the last <coughs> 15 years is to actually undertake training workshops looking at specific industrial archaeology issues. Obviously that's um, because we're a UK based association, uh, it's only been in the UK, but there's scope there to, to widen that. Um, and in working with Dan on um, one of the regional research framework projects in England, in the North West, We've been using workshops very extensively to engage with a cross-section of those people working in archaeology, the voluntary sector, those from the built heritage sector, as well as those from museums and, and uh, professional archaeology. And this certainly is a way of engaging with that more active community in trying to put together an agreed uh, set of questions that comes from the active community rather than being uh, top down. So uh, I'm sure we'll come back to this kind of arrangement later on today just to show you some of the work in progress on, on the regional research framework questions for North West England. Uh, why is that relevant to try to pull together something for industrial archaeology? Well, because it pulls out these 10 topics <clears throat> that I think are relevant for industrial archaeology research whether we're in the UK or whether we're in France or, or, or Germany or Greece, um, environment, rural settlement, urban landscape, religion, ritual, and ceremony, technology and production and trade and exchange, which, which may be seen as the core, the traditional core of industrial archaeology research and preservation, along with transport and infrastructure. We've also got conflict, we've also got nation. And the, the, the thing at the bottom there, there's, there's that section on general. There are some general cross-cutting period themes uh, that have emerged from this. Um, and that's just, this is just one way in which we're starting to express those questions with supporting statements, which goes back to the, uh, the Dutch model. Um, so where does that leave us then? It's my last slide. Um, as an association... We pride ourselves on having an international audience. We have more than four mem 400 members globally, but most of them are concentrated <coughs> in Ireland, the UK, North America, and in particular, and increasingly, in Europe, our, our members from Europe, or mainland, <coughs> mainland Europe, are on the rise. So how do we produce a third generation research strategy for the association? that is more than just focusing on the UK. I like some of the ideas that, that, that David showed in terms of international linkages. But there are some, um, some strategies that we, we can use. The, um, the, the review workshops I've shown you are, are definitely a technique that works and maybe attaching some to the EAA down the line. You know, that, that might be a way of getting those going. Uh, Consulting on that research agenda is, uh, is essential. Um, consulting those active in developing it, uh, active in the field, and disseminating disseminating from the web is essential. Uh, have to allow that interaction uh, to take place and linkage with other research frameworks, whether they're at a 
uh, a sub-national level or a national level or, or an international level because industrial archaeology and industrialization is one of those subjects that, uh, like climate change, that cuts across periods and cuts across national boundaries. Okay, those are just some thoughts. Thank you.